Hello, and welcome to Mesquite Living Waters Fellowship's Wednesday's Word Series. We invite you now to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's message. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday's Word here at Living Waters Fellowship Church. I'm Moose Moorhead, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm going to talk to you about a subject that I know personally, and is, it's one that's more often than not spoken of in, in, in conventions where you have men or women and sometimes husbands and wives. It's a difficult one to talk about, especially when it affects you personally. And it's called the road of addiction, freedom or death. I was reluctant to even approach this volatile subject. You see, for many years, I worked among and with young adults, male and female, who had an addiction to drugs, alcohol, or sex. I personally knew of some whose young lives were taken from them after injecting poison into their veins. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. I've held, I've held babies born with an addiction because their mother used while she was pregnant. And I, and I held in my arms children whose mother or father went off to prison for endangering their lives. I held battered women while waiting for an ambulance to take them to the hospital. Their spouse or boyfriend had lost control while high on meth. I've stood in a door with a, with a druggie pointing a gun at my pistol, at, I, <laughs> with a druggie pointing a pistol at my gut while high, on, while high as a kite. I've watched, I've walked into homes where the syringe was on the table and an infant was playing on the floor. While the average person never sees this side of addiction, society is quick to judge and turn their backs upon anyone who is found guilty. Most commonly, society only sees addiction to, to drug usage or alcohol usage as an abuse. People using heroin, cocaine, meth, or amphetamines are, what, were, are what's pictured in most people's minds. Society, more often than not, sees alcoholism as a genetic weakness rather than an addiction or an abuse. They only see uh, or associate with a wino standing on a street corner with a brown paper bag, and they are quick to point out to others when they have had too much to drink. They, they find humor watching someone stumble down the sidewalk or passed out in a yard. Society as a whole never sees the horrible fear, emotional and physical damage to the individual or to the families that have loved them. People most often place those who have an addiction to drugs or alcohol into a court system for taking these individuals away and sticking them in a hole to dry out. Keep them away from the public. It, it's a very sad thing. Let, let the halfway houses and the jails straighten them out. Get the junkies' problems and get them uh, and the wino off the street. And little do they know, there's a much deeper and even darker side to this addiction than even these nightmares that I've just described to you. It's easy for you to look at an alcoholic or a junkie and understand that this can and often does lead to a, another final end. Those horrible abuses often take the lies of those that they've touched. And sadly, too often, friends and family members will follow in the same path. When you, when you cannot, what you cannot see is the horrible anguish and pain in my heart from so many who have reached out for help and failed. You cannot know the tears of a person or a parent sitting all, all night praying or seeing the face of a child as they were taken from the arms of their mother or father. You cannot understand the pain of having the police ring your doorbell and know that your child's life has ended from an overdose. You see, my wife and I, we know these things. I am sharing them with you, and we know them firsthand. It's personal, and the pain the fear, the anguish are real. We have had a call that a family member has overdosed and CPR has been started and we didn't know if they were gonna make it. 
That was my stepdaughter. We have seen a child taken from his mother, screaming and kicking and, and sobbing. And we've been there and witnessed when the police have rushed into a house of a, a, of a loved one and taken one off to jail. We know. We've been there and left with broken hearts. Death does not have to be an end. There is hope. There are wonderful success stories, and we know these two. Most importantly, we know the how, why, where, and how to help them. And you have to believe me that Jesus Christ is at the center if you want this to happen in your life or someone you meet. My reason for bringing you down this road might surprise you. Do you understand that most people you know have an addiction? Yes, that probably includes you. I know it certainly includes me. And yes, ultimately, the end is the same for each of us. Now that you think I've lost my mind, I'm going to give you an explanation. Understand this. Webster's Dictionary defines addiction. It's a compulsive, chronic, psychological, or physiological need for a habit, something that's habit-forming, a substance, a behavior, or an activity that can bring harm or typically causing well-defined symptoms. However, the definition does not mention one very important key element. The most important element is missing. The element is called spirituality. You are reaching out for God's intervention in his help. John 14, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Putting the cookies on the bottom shelf, all of us understand that addiction is both a physical and an emotional illness. For those individuals that I have spoken about, their addiction had reached a point that they could no longer help themselves. The addiction that most never think about are rampant in this world today. There are addictions of pornography, eating, money, cars, sports, politics, gambling, and the list is endless. Anything and everything that keeps our hearts and eyes from being focused upon God is an addiction. Does your addiction cause personality change? Do you get angry if someone interrupts your, your time with, a, with this addic addiction? Football. Yes, if you love this sport so much and it brings a change to your personality, it's an addiction. You don't want anyone else in the room unless they love your team. Phone calls are out. Nobody answers the door. And how much can I wager without losing the house? My wife and I have seen miracles happen. Yes, miracles happen not only within our own family, but miracles in the lives of many young men and women who were held captive by the use of chemicals. We have per personally witnessed families being reunited. We have watched as a child ran to their mother as, as she came home clean from the bondage of Satan's grip. We have seen fathers weep with joy, putting their hope back into their hearts. We have seen precious, wonderful young men and women given another chance in life, eternal, free from the bondage in the loving arms of Christ Jesus, addiction. This is absolutely life or death, and it is for all eternity. Freedom isn't free, as we all know, from the price of our young men and women have given their lives for our nation and freedoms that they gave their all. Jesus also gave his life and blood as a gift to cleanse us from our sin. He did this for every man, woman, and child as a gift. This gift is for each of us and contains healing and hope free from those things that would drag us away from the love of God. All anyone has to do is ask, reach out for the hand of God and allow the healing to begin. I pray these words have touched your heart. Next time you see someone struggling don't be afraid to point them in the right direction to a professional, 
I spent 30 years doing this, working with counselors and doctors and ministers. When I say point them in the right direction, tell them you love them, Christ loves them, and come talk to your pastor. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's in God's loving arms. I lost my first wife to cancer, and I have remarried to a blessing, a wonderful woman, and her daughter was a heroin addict. And these horrible things that I've described to you, we know personally, but the hope is in Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the same beautiful young woman who had an addiction to heroin has an addiction to Jesus Christ, and she's alive and well. Thank you. I pray all of you have heard this. I pray that it's touched your heart.